All living organisms must be able to pass materials in and out of its cells to be able to survive. From food and water to a variety of different gases, organisms must do this to be able to keep their cells in homeostasis and acquire the materials that they need to be able to survive. For example, in humans, oxygen diffuses across the membrane into red blood cells in order to be able to, to be transported throughout the body and oxygenate the cells throughout the body. Without this process, we would not be able to survive. In the movement of molecules across membranes, there's two different types of transport that can take place, passive and active transport. Passive transport requires no energy and encompasses a variety of different types of transport. Active transport, on the other hand, is active and requires energy in the form of ATP to be able to take place. In this examination and lab, we're going to investigate one particular type of passive transport called diffusion. And we'll do so using potatoes to observe how materials move across the membrane in order to meet homeostasis. So in this lab, we're going to use potatoes as a way to investigate the process of passive transport, specifically simple diffusion. And we'll do so by taking chunks of potato or cubes of potato and placing them into different salt solution, salt molar solutions, such as 1.0 molar. We'll let the cubes sit for 48 hours, and before putting them into the liquid, we'll find the mass before and after to see how that mass has changed. In doing so, it'll help us to better understand and draw conclusions about how these potatoes have changed in size due to being put into different saline solution concentrations or molarities. This will help us to be able to identify solutions that represent hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions in comparison to the potato. Understanding this will help us to better understand why it is important for medical organs and donor organs to be trans uh, transported in very specific conditions in order to be able to survive. To get started today, I'm going to peel my potato and cut six different cubes in a two centimeter by two centimeter cube. Next, I'll take each cube and place it into one of the beakers so that it's submerged under the solution of 1.0 molar, 0.8 molar, 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0 molar saline solutions. The saline solutions were made by dissolving salts in distilled water and heating them up and mixing them for a period of time in order for the salt to become fully dissolved. So I now have all of my 2x2 two two potato cubes cut and I'm next going to find the mass of each and record that and then add to uh, my six different uh, solutions that I have here um, and then we'll let them sit for 48 hours. So I'll start by um, putting a weighing boat on my balance, zeroing it out and then uh, taking one of my cubes. And this first one will go for 1.0 molar. At the start is 10.03 grams. So I'll go ahead and take that and then place it into my solution and place the sticky note next to it right there so I'll be able to know. And then I'll go ahead and do this for each of the following uh, so that I have a starting mass We'll let them sit for 48 hours and then we'll have an ending mass. And before I leave these sitting, I'll cover all of them with some plastic wrap in order to prevent any uh, evaporation of the water so that the potato cubes stay submerged for the duration of the 48 hours.
So now that I have all of my potato cubes submerged, I'll go ahead and cover these up and we'll let them sit for 48 hours and see what happens. All right, so well, welcome back. It's been 48 hours and our potato cubes have been sitting uh, for that last, uh, those last 48 hours. And uh, now we're gonna take them out of our different uh, saline solutions, different molarity solutions, and see how, uh, what's happened with the change of mass to be able to look at uh, what effect has these different salt uh, concentration solutions had on our potato cubes. So I'll go ahead and get our balance set up here. And as this is warming up, I'm looking at the potato cubes and I notice uh, right away that we've got some of these have kind of changed color a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll put some pictures in the video so that you can see a little bit better as well. But um, the one, the 0.8 and the 0.6 all have started to change color a little bit, a little bit darker almost as if they are molding. Um, probably definitely would not want to eat them to start. So. Um, we'll take these out here and one important part uh, before I put them onto the balance is we'll want to take them out and make sure that we get all of our excess water off. So I'm just kind of rolling it around in a paper towel a little bit here and uh, we don't want any, we, we want the mass of the potato cube but we don't want any excess water mass to influence that. Um, so I'll put that on here now and record the mass so 0, 0.0 and I'll just put it back in there for now we'll go 0 0.2 so we'll just repeat this process for all six of our cubes and then based off of our results we'll be able to make some conclusions about whether our solutions in comparison to the potato are hypotonic, hypertonic, or maybe even isotonic. As I pick this one up here, the 0 0.6, I notice it's a little bit more squishy. Uh, that's a very scientific term. Um, it's a little bit softer than the others uh, in, when squeezing the potato. Um, so that would be a qualitative observation that we would want to take note of. And I will also note that the 0 0.6 was uh, one potato that definitely uh, had a, started to have a decrease in mass, uh, as we'll see in our results here in a minute. Um, definitely a decrease in mass. The 0 0.4 was a small increase. Um, the 0.2 didn't really have a lot of increase, um, um, a couple tenths of a gram, um, but uh, a small amount of change here. Um, 0 0.8, uh, actually lost some mass here. And the 0.8, we'll see what happened with the 0.1. Yeah, equally the same, the point 0.1 also lost some mass. So now that I've been able to record the mass for all of these, I will uh, compare the before and the after, and I'll, I'll put a chart in the video so that you can see that really well also. And we'll use that information to help us identify, the, for example, the 0, 0.0, that potato cube that's soaked in it. Did it gain mass over the course of the 48 hours or did it lose mass or did it stay the same? And based off of that, if it gained mass, we can uh, identify that solution as hypotonic. If it lost mass, then we could say it's hypertonic, water's moving out. And then if it stayed about the same, uh, we would identify that as isotonic. And so the reason that we use these potato cubes to represent model cells is it helps us to gain an understanding of what happens to cells in different um, salts or saline environments and how do the concentration of salt to water, how does that influence osmosis in cells? And so our potato cubes were representing the cells in this case. 
From our data that we've collected here, combined with data from past years, we'll be able to calculate some averages, uh, use our standard deviation test as well as some other statistical tests to be able to look at and draw some trends and conclusions based off of the overall uh, data that's been collected. And so hopefully this helps to give you a better understanding of the concepts of hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic, uh, as well as why we see water diffuse in and out of, uh, of, of model cells with our potato cubes via osmosis in different saline solutions.